Les marketeurs survivront-ils au choc du contenu à l'ère de l'IA Omnis Education Group a lancé un programme transverse en anglais, intitulé Content Creation in the Age of AI, ou Création de contenu à l'ère de l'IA, pour aider les étudiants à mieux comprendre l'IA générative. Près de 1000 étudiants seront certifiés dans le cadre de ce programme d'ici début février 2024. Dans le cadre de ce programme, Visionary Marketing a interviewé Mark Schaeffer, l'un des blogueurs marketing les plus renommés au monde, afin de mieux comprendre comment les marketeurs devraient aborder le nouveau choc du contenu provoqué par l'IA. Les réponses de Mark sont percutantes et seront utiles aux créateurs de contenu qu'ils soient confirmés ou en devenir. Des interviews, des chiffres, des faits, des études. Pas de blabla, ce sont les podcasts de Visionary Marketing disponibles sur toutes les bonnes chaînes de Balado Diffusion. Bonjour et bienvenue dans les podcasts de Visionary Marketing, le sujet du jour, survivre au choc de contenu à l'ère de l'IA avec Marc Schaeffer et Omnes Education Group. Comprendre l'IA générative en 2024 est une nécessité, que vous l'appréciez ou non. J'entends par là non seulement comment elle fonctionne, mais aussi comment elle doit être utilisée, quand elle doit ou ne doit pas être utilisée, quelles sont ses limites et les questions sociétales que sa mise en œuvre soulève. Ma position à ce sujet est très simple. Ce que l'on saisit rationnellement, on ne craint ni n'idéalise. Je suis convaincu que le simple fait d'interdire l'utilisation de l'IA générative, comme je vois le faire actuellement dans de nombreuses universités américaines, n'est pas une bonne idée. Tout d'abord, cela n'empêchera pas les étudiants d'utiliser ces outils. Il y a toujours un moyen de contourner ce type d'interdiction. D'autre part, cela n'aidera pas les apprenants à développer un regard critique sur la technologie et ses inévitables limites. C'est pourquoi le groupe Omnes Education, l'un des plus grands d'Europe, a lancé un programme transverse très ambitieux en anglais pour tous ses étudiants. J'ai eu la chance de travailler avec eux sur ce projet, je n'étais pas seul. J'ai eu beaucoup de plaisir à travailler avec Bénédicte, Julie et Fanny et toute la formidable équipe Shift. Au terme du processus, début février 2024, c'est près de 1000 étudiants qui seront certifiés dans le cadre de ce programme « Création de contenu à l'ère de l'IA ». Contenu du sujet, il était tout à fait logique que j'interroge un des meilleurs blogueurs marketing au monde, Mark Schaeffer, dont le travail nous inspire chez Visionary Marketing depuis au moins 10 ans. J'ai interviewé Mark dans le cadre de cette conférence afin qu'il nous dise comment les marketeurs devraient aborder ce nouveau choc du contenu. Comme toujours, ses réponses ont été percutantes et cette interview est une leçon pour tous les créateurs de contenu établi ou en devenir, qui souhaite savoir comment s'orienter dans l'avenir. La thèse qui sous-tend l'article « Le content shock » que nous traduisons ici de façon assez littérale par le choc du contenu et que nous dit Mark Schaeffer dans un système économique, un système naturel ou un système humain, s'il y a trop de quelque chose, il doit y avoir un ajustement. Cela vaut pour l'eau, la neige, la pollution, la chaleur il n'y a aucune raison pour que la création de contenu ne suive pas cette règle non plus, a expliqué Marc. Vous allez être submergé de contenu et vous devrez vous adapter, a-t-il poursuivi ce schéma, se répète dans tous les canaux où il y a un besoin de contenu. Lorsqu'un nouveau canal marketing devient populaire, la quantité de contenu dans ce canal monte, 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 cela devient une course aux armements et c'est une compétition sans fin. Comme toujours, Marc fait mouche. Tous les créateurs de contenu sont passés par là. Ceux qui publiaient tous les mois dans les années 90 ont commencé à publier toutes les semaines dix ans plus tard, puis tous les jours et enfin plusieurs fois par jour. L'adage « publish or perish »,« publier ou mourir » n'a jamais été aussi vrai. Il en va de même pour les plateformes sociales. Publier une fois par mois sur LinkedIn ne vous rendra pas très populaire. Au bout d'un certain temps, on peut cependant se demander si publier toujours plus de contenu a encore un sens. Et vous n'avez que deux voies possibles, poursuit Mark Schaeffer. Soit vous créez un contenu de plus en plus riche et cela a un coût, ou bien vous devrez le promouvoir de mieux en mieux, ce qui a également un coût. C'est quelque chose qui se produit avec tous les canaux médias sociaux, anciens et nouveaux. Aujourd'hui, nous avons Threads et tout le monde aux états unis nous dit « Allez sur Threads », nous dit Mark. Il est facile d'y trouver une audience, mais cela ne dure jamais longtemps. Dès que la plateforme est populaire et que tout le monde y a migré, il devient beaucoup plus difficile de trouver son public. Il s'agit d'un schéma répétitif, explique Marc. Ainsi, quel est l'impact de l'IA générative sur la création de contenu Comme d'habitude, les choses ne sont pas noires ou blanches. D'un côté, 
C'est un avantage formidable. Je cite « L'IA générative libère la créativité et la productivité d'une manière merveilleusement nouvelle, nous dit-il. De l'autre, il y a une véritable inondation de contenu. » Commençons par l'aspect positif, l'augmentation de la créativité et de la productivité. Marc raconte une anecdote à ce sujet. « J'ai une amie qui, de son propre aveu, nous dit-il, écrit très mal. Elle s'est inscrite à ChatGPT et depuis, elle s'est exclamée « Maintenant, je peux bloguer tous les jours, je pourrais même écrire un livre, c'est merveilleux. Chat GPT pour l'écriture, me dit Marc, c'est comme une calculatrice pour les mathématiques. Il fait de chacun un écrivain compétent. C'est fantastique. D'un autre côté, inonder le monde avec un grand nombre de nouveaux contenus n'est peut-être pas une bonne idée. Cela aggrave le problème de la saturation du contenu, ajoute-t-il. On observe énormément de pratiques contraires à l'éthique, black hat. Le système ne peut pas survivre à long terme, conclut-il. À première vue, tout cela n'augure rien de bon pour le marketing de contenu. Pourtant, il y a une autre façon de voir les choses. Et Marc reste dans l'ensemble plutôt optimiste. Je pense qu'il a raison. Un grand système comme Internet se purgera presque toujours automatiquement. Si le contenu est médiocre, les utilisateurs finiront par partir. Ce qui obligera les plateformes et les moteurs de recherche à faire le ménage. En effet, Marc pense que les choses vont s'améliorer avec le temps. Ces personnes finiront par être pénalisées, nous dit-il, et disparaîtront. Et le système se réparera de lui-même. Je ne suis pas inquiet des conséquences de l'IA générative à court terme. Je pense que nous devons rester focalisés, nous dit-il, sur la qualité de notre travail et produire un contenu d'exception. Marc, auteur du best-seller None, être connu, estime que seules nos marques personnelles nous sauveront. Le fait d'être connu et aimé nous permettra d'attirer à nous nos propres audiences a-t-il ajouté. Cela me rappelle le conseil que j'ai donné dans ce webinaire de Push Engage sur la Gen AI en 2020. Étant donné que les contenus de mauvaise qualité seront nombreux, les personnes à la recherche d'informations de valeur devront se concentrer sur des sources reconnues et dignes de confiance, pas seulement les médias grand public, mais aussi les blogueurs, les professionnels renommés et les influenceurs. Des auteurs en bref auxquels on peut se fier. Selon Marc, pour ceux qui ont travaillé sur leur réputation, l'excès de contenu ne pose pas de véritable problème. En fait, le volume de contenu produit en lui-même n'a aucun impact, selon lui. Admettons que nous soyons un blogueur, nous dit-il, qui essaye d'exister dans un monde où des millions d'autres articles de blog existent. Qu'il y en ait un million ou un milliard n'a pas vraiment d'incidence. Dans les deux cas, il faut sortir du lot. D'autant plus que, comme vous l'avez suggéré, une grande partie de ce contenu, nous dit-il, généré par l'IA, n'est pas très qualitatif. Toutefois, la qualité de ces contenus va aller en s'améliorant. Je pense que le point le plus important à propos du contenu génératif n'est pas vraiment la menace qu'il représente aujourd'hui, mais la menace qu'il représentera demain du fait de son amélioration rapide. Je pense, et c'est toujours lui qui parle, que dans les 18 prochains mois, nous serons en mesure de créer un film entièrement monté depuis notre chambre, la table de notre cuisine, pour une somme, Modique. C'est la raison pour laquelle beaucoup de scénaristes et d'acteurs étaient en grève à Hollywood. En fait, euh, la réalité lui a déjà rattrapé puisqu'on est déjà capable de le faire. Bon, le résultat actuel est vraiment super moche, donc euh, il faut rester prudent. Pour conclure cet entretien, Marc nous a narré une anecdote. Lorsque ChatGPT a été lancé, je me suis immédiatement précipité chez un de mes amis, Shelley Palmer, un analyste de la scène techno très connu aux états unis Je lui ai demandé ce qu'il en pensait. Il m'a répondu « C'est terrifiant. J'ai demandé à cette chose de créer un article de blog dans le style de Shelley Palmer et il a fait un travail magnifique en 5 secondes. Je suis remplacé à 80%. » Une fois de plus, à première vue, on pourrait penser que c'est la fin du marketing de contenu, principalement sur des sujets technologiques qui sont si bien couverts sur Internet. « Mais regardons-y de plus près, » conclut Marc. De quoi sont constitués les 20% Quels sont les points sur lesquels Shelley ne sera jamais égalé La réponse à cette question est plus simple que vous ne le pensez. Shelley est connu. On lui fait confiance, explique Mark. Il est apprécié. Et c'est quelque chose que ChatGPT ne pourra jamais lui enlever. Il est clair, d'après ce que Mark et Shelley ont exprimé, que les étudiants qui veulent réussir demain devront élever leur niveau de manière significative. Espérons que ce programme de formation et le certificat délivré par Omnes les aideront à atteindre cet objectif. L'équipe du groupe Omnes Education a développé une magnifique et inspirante bande annonce basée sur mon texte d'introduction à ce programme que vous pourrez voir dans l'article. Elle a été envoyée à tous les étudiants du groupe pour les informer et les encourager à s'inscrire. Je vous donne également un lien pour vous renseigner sur le groupe Omnes Education Group.
Et maintenant, je vous laisse en compagnie de Marc Schaeffer pour cette interview reproduite dans son intégralité dans la langue originelle. So I'm here with Mark Schaeffer. Hi, Mark. It's good to see you after all these years. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's a delight to see you. We, as you know, we, we're doing this lecture with Omnis Group about uh, the uh, how AI is going to impact content writing. And obviously, immediately, I thought about you because nine years ago, you wrote uh, this groundbreaking article called The Content Shock, which I, I keep quoting over and over again and yet again in my for forthcoming book. The situation was very, very complicated back then because we we were getting so much content and so few viewers to to read it. That's what the point you were making. Mm. As generative AI made things work nine, nine years down the line, and 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 what are the most striking examples of the impact of Gen AI? Well, uh, you know. It's 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 a great question, and certainly that is something that is on everyone's mind. Um, the 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 thesis behind the content shock article is that when anything changes in an economic system, a natural system, or a human system, if there's too much of something, there has to be an an adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. If there's too much water, you're going to have a flood, and you need to adjust. If there's too much heat or not enough something. And it, it goes the same with content and this economic system of content marketing, where in the early days, it was relatively easy. It was novel uh, to get an audience if you were an early blogger and, or, or an early YouTuber. And then this pattern repeats, Jan. In every channel, uh, they need, there's a need for content. And then as it becomes popular, content, the amount of content in the channel goes up, 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 up. And mm. so it becomes an arms race. Mm. So so it's a, it's, it's a never-ending competition and you only have two choices. You have to create better and better and better and better content. And there's a cost to that. Or you have to promote it better and better and better and better. And there's a cost to that. So one example I use in my classes is to think about television as a channel. But this is something you can think about, you know, any social media channel, any new channel that emerges, the same thing's going to happen. In the early days of television, you could go down to the studio and start your own show. Mm. You could do a, a, a cooking show. You could do a, a music show. And so... This was a channel that that needed content, and then it became popular, and the production values increased, and the salaries increased, and so now where are we today? I love The Mandalorian. Ten million dollars an episode. Then what's next? WandaVision, twenty-eight million dollars an episode. Then what's next? The new uh, Lord of the Rings show. It's like fifty dollars, fifty million dollars an episode. So it, it, the, the cost of standing out in the world goes up and up and up. And that goes, so now we have threads. So everybody says, go on to threads. It's easy to find an audience. Well, that's not going to last as people pour on. So we, we see this pattern repeating. Now, so how's this, so how's this impact uh, generative AI? Well, of course, number one, there's a wonderful benefit of this. It, it unleashes creativity and productivity in wonderful new ways. I have a friend who is, by her own admission, a terrible writer. Mm -hmm. she, and she she now could put her ideas into chat GPT. She said, I can blog every day. I might even be able to write a book. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It, it, it's chat GPT to writing is like a calculator to math. Mm -hmm. With calculators in the 80s, it made everybody a competent mathematician, even if you hated math. You could do your taxes, at least, right? So it may, so ChatGPT makes everyone a competent writer. That is wonderful. But it is also flooding the market with, with a lot of new content. And, um, you know, it makes the whole content shock problem all that more severe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
time will tell. We've seen examples of uh, SEO websites uh, churning new content at the rate of 1,200 pieces a day. Yeah. So, well, oh, here's the thing that gives me comfort. Um, in the early days of the web, and I was there, <laughs> and you were there. <laughs> As well. um, look, you remember, Jan, that there are a lot of black hat. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So for the younger viewers, what that means is it's like really unethical things like churning out thousands of articles, right? It's just things that the, the system can't survive. It can't be sustained long term if we let unethical people win. Mm. So that's why I I never, ever participated in any black hat unethical principles because I thought, you know, it's those people will 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 be penalized. Those people will will go away eventually. The mm -hmm. system will work itself out. So I'm not so much worried about the short term, you know, game playing that's going on. The system will work out. I think we need to stay focused on doing good work, doing exceptional work. And I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit more, but really the only thing that's going to save us is this idea of, of our personal brands and, and being known and being beloved so we can earn our own audience. Mm. In one of your latest pieces, actually, which I use for to build this questions list, um, it's called actually it's How to Beat ChatGPT and the New Wave of Content Shock. Uh, you you mentioned that the Library of Alexandria had one hundred thousand books, and and that was already considered too much at the time. So is it something that have we reached a scale that is unprecedented, or is it just uh, normal in fact? Well, the point that was tried to make is, let's say we're trying to compete in a world, and we're a blogger. And there's a million other blog posts. Well, whether it's a million or a billion, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we still have to earn our way. And as as you have suggested, a lot of this AI generated content is 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 not very good. Now it's it's going to get better. I think the most significant thing about uh about the generative content is not really the threat it provides now, but the threat it provides tomorrow because it's getting so much better so fast, creating almost, you know, miraculous kind of things. So, um, I, I mean, I think in the next 18 months, we're going to be able to create a full-length motion picture from our, from our kitchen table with almost no money. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just coming that fast and it's going to be that good. Um, and that's why a lot of the writers and actors are on strike in Hollywood right now to protect against that, 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 that very thing. So the, the main point I made in this article is look, the competition is hard. It's always been hard. And, it, and the only thing we can do is, is concentrate on what's in our control. And that is in my view, becoming known, creating this personal brand. And the story I tell is when ChatGPT was introduced, I uh, immediately went to um, a friend of mine, Shelly Palmer, who is a very well-known tech analyst in America. And I said, uh, you know, what do you think? He said, it's terrifying. He said, I've asked this thing to create a blog post in the voice of Shelly Palmer, and it, and it did a magnificent job in, in, in five seconds. He said, he said, I'm 80% replaced. Now, on the surface, the, that's a bold and perhaps terrifying statement. But let's look at it more closely. What is the 20%? What's not being replaced? It's this. Shelley is known. He's trusted. He's beloved. And that is something AI can never take away from us. You know, I'm a blogger, I'm a podcaster, I'm a writer. I'm not worried about AI. My subscriptions, if, if, if there's a billion blog posts out there, 
my subscriptions are going to keep going up because there's only one me. And, and, and that is the most important thing. Now, the second part of the lesson from Shelley is he was, he used to be a music producer. He said, this reminds me of the eighties. He said, before 1986, if you wanted to create music for an advertisement or a television show, you needed a band. In 1986, we had the first computerized music generators. Great technological disruptor. You could now create instrumental music out of a computer. He said, in one year, half the professional musicians in America lost their jobs. Mm. Now, who kept their jobs? It was the innovators. It was the best musicians the jazz musicians. It was the, the, you know, the rock stars pushing new boundaries, you, learning to use these new electronic tools in creative you know, new ways. It was the producers. It was the songwriters. So the, the people who applied their skills, they weren't commodities, right? They had a special skill set. They were, the, they were the best at what they did. They used their own personality and their own gifts to take the music a new way. Those are the people who survived. And that's those are the people who will survive also in the world of AI. We have to be known. We have to work on our personal brand. We have to mm. have the reputation, the presence, and the authority to survive in this world of of AI content. And you know, I've been shouting that from the rooftops, especially for for young people today is everybody should be working on the personal brand. They should be creating content mm. in a way that helps them become known in the world. Okay. Now I understand. That. And I think for people like you and me, I suppose it's really, really straightforward because we're sort of known in our circles. Well, you're a little bit more than myself, but we're all known. But what about uh, young students, though? Is it, isn't it more difficult for them to develop a personal brand? And very often I see young people being afraid of that because they say, you know, I'm young, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything, I don't know about... Uh, and in the past, you know, all you had to do was to write, basically, and exist. And now it's a lot more difficult because of all this content being churned out by machines. So what is your... How, how can you develop a personal brand and I suppose they're going to be winners and losers there. Well, so there's, there's two things I, I talk about with, with young people in this regard. Number one is you don't have to be an expert to create insight and value. And let me give you an example. When I started blogging, I didn't know anything about blogging. I was terrible at blogging. So I would I, I took people along on my journey. I told them what I was learning. This worked. This didn't work. Oh my gosh! You know, look at this new innovation. How can we apply this to content creation? So I just I, I was I was very open and helpful and generous and even vulnerable sometimes. But the point is, I was not an expert. Now, four years later. After I started the journey, I wrote the best-selling book on blogging <laughs> because I went on the journey. So you don't have to be the expert. You just take people on the journey of where you want to be. If you want to be mm -hmm. someone in sports marketing, look mm -hmm. at what's going on in sports marketing and comment on it. Say, this was amazing. This thing that Nike did, it's the most you know, amazing. Look at this thing from Adidas. I don't understand why they did that. Just take people on the journey, whatever it is, fashion or art or music or culture, you know, whatever, wherever you want to be. That's number one. Number two is we're going to look back, you know, 10 years from now, we're going to look back at today and we're going to say, we're going to think the internet was just beginning. The people and the ideas that are going to influence us the most 10 years from now hasn't started yet. It's, it's, it's going to be some of the people listening to this video. Hmm. 
And 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 like you and I didn't we didn't have this opportunity when we were young. To be to be known when you and I were young, that was someone else's choice. We had to be selected by a newspaper editor or a magazine editor or someone at a news desk. Maybe we had to go to the right college or marry into the right family to become known or be in politics, right? It was someone else's choice. But today, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. It doesn't matter what school you went to. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how dark your life has been up until now. Mm. You have the opportunity to take this technology, take AI, take TikTok, you know, take these innovations and make a dent on the world. Be known. You know, have, have you can influence has been democratized. It's accessible to anyone. And that's something you and I never had. So I I I wouldn't be afraid of anything. I would be bold and I would just I would just go for it and do it with joy. <laughs> that's a great message. A message of hope. Maybe a last question. Um, content shock is not just uh, impacting bloggers like us. It's it's impact impacting content publishers like uh, news media and others. Yeah, and uh, some of them are really up in arms, like the New York Times or the Verge. The Verge had a story about this, and they said this is the end of the web as we knew it. It's probably the end of the web. The end of the web. Full stop. Do you do you buy into this, or is it the end of the verge as we knew it? <laughs> yes, um, well, think about this. When the web started, um, the, there was this new model that was created that was just, it seemed completely counterintuitive. As a blogger, we were supposed to share our best ideas. Now, before the web, that's how we made money. You don't tell everybody your best ideas. You make people pay for it. And and now there's this new culture where you're supposed to be vulnerable and you tell everybody and you give give away your lessons. It's like, how do you make money doing that? How can this... And, and if you tried to hold your best ideas back, the person down the street's going to get it away for free. Mm. And even if you, you know, here's what happened to consulting practices. Consulting practices had all these white papers and all this research behind these paywalls. Guess what? Someone pays for the research. Now they've got the white paper. Whoosh. It goes everywhere. Mm. You would think this would destroy the economic world when everybody's ideas flow freely at no cost. But it didn't destroy the economic world. The economic world had to change very, very dramatically. And I think that's what we're happening. That's what that's what's happening now is, you know, the article that you sent me from the Verge, uh, you know, said, well, look, you know, this 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 web that we have is kind of dying, and the new web. Is is being reborn? Well, that's 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 happened multiple times, <laughs> mm. and um, but here's you know here's the here's the beautiful thing is that uh, the people that are listening to this they're the ones that are going to figure this out. Um, you know, if there's we there, we've just got to we we've got to adapt. We've got to adopt the old publishing. The, you know, the traditional book pub publishers. Have been in a free fall for a year, for years. Traditional advertising agencies have been in a free fall for years because of the streaming economy. We don't want ads. We want to watch The Mandalorian without ads. We want to hear audiobooks without ads. We want to listen to music on Spotify without ads. So I mean, this 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 period of disruption has it, it, it has been constant. So this is just another. AI and the flood of content that's changing the economics, that's just another step on the ladder toward mm -hmm. how the web is 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 evolving. You know, I'm, not, I'm I'm certainly not saying the sky is falling. The sky's falling for some people. Yeah. Huh. 
but 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 the, the but in, but the heavens are opening up for new opportunity for a lot of other people. Well, there's a, as I said, a, a great message of hope for our students. So they have to invent the future and embrace these technologies rather than fear them. Yes, 100%. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Surtout, n'oubliez pas de mettre une bonne note à ce podcast si vous l'avez apprécié.